Splunk, NiFi, and StreamSets. Apache NiFi can be a very useful tool for Splunk users. For example, you can use NiFi to manipulate the data before sending the data from NiFi to Splunk. Or vice versa, you can ingest the data into Splunk and then send the data from Splunk to NiFi and NiFi can then send the data to other utilities like Kafka. To start the demo, we're going to download NiFi from nifi.apache.org and I'm going to install it into my Linux box. For this demo, I am first going to start Splunk. And secondly, I'm going to start NiFi. It takes NiFi a few seconds to start, and then we can interact with it using a browser. To start the demo, I am going to prepare Splunk to receive the data from NiFi. In this particular setup, I have two inputs that I'm going to receive from NiFi. One is using the HTTP event collector. The other one is using TCP. In addition, I have prepared an index to receive the data from NiFi. We can see it right here underneath the indexes. I have NiFi data and right now it has zero events. First, let's create a new HTTP event collector. We can see that underneath the HTTP event collector, we have a button called the global settings, and we can note that HTTP event collector, at least in my example, is going to be using port 9088 to receive the data. Selecting the new token, we're going to give it a name called NiFi HTTP Event Collector and leave the rest as default. And we're going to select the NiFi data as an index that we allow for this HTTP Event Collector, which also turns the default index as the NiFi data. Selecting the review and submitting, we can see that Splunk generated a token value and we're going to be using this token value to connect from NiFi to Splunk. So let's copy this value. Clicking on Settings, Data Inputs, we can now see that we have an additional HTTP event collector specifically for NiFi. And finally, let's create a TCP input, click on a new TCP, the port, in my example is going to be 9997, as well as I'm going to receive from NiFi. In the TCP port, I'm going to be receiving access combined type of log. And finally, we are also going to tell NiFi to send the information on the TCP into the NiFi data index. Next, let's start NiFi. The NiFi UI is a canvas-like that allows us to drop and drag items and then, for example, fill in any one of the multiple types that NiFi provide for us. For example, I can type the word Splunk and I can see that there is two options. One is called Get Splunk, which I'm going to demo in a minute, as well as Put Splunk, which is going to be used for the TCP that I just prepared a minute ago. Also, for the HTTP event collector, I'm going to use a filter called Invoke HTTP which is specific item for HTTP traffic. 
for this demo, I'm going to use a dataset, Apache log, and the Apache log has some events that indicates that the event and the request went without any problems. And in some cases, we see that the request failed. And so in the NiFi flow, I'm going to split the events that have errors from the events without any errors. In this NiFi flow, we see that the very first item we have is called a tail file. Right clicking on the tail file and clicking on the configure, we see that the file we're going to tail is the access combine file that we just examined. Let's start this process. And we can see that after a few seconds, now if I collected that file, and it's now in the queue. However, since the split text process has not started yet, that's where the item is at this point. This is just a process that will take the events and split them by the line breaking. Again, we will start the split text. And now we see that from a single file that we collected using the tail, now we have 237 events. Those 237 events are now again in the queue on the way to be extracted. The extract text function has a regular expression to split all the events that are above 300, 300 to 500, are going to be splitted from the events that have 299 and below. So we're going to start the extract text process. And the outcome of getting those 237 events is that the regular expression found that 144 of those events are fine. There are no errors or no indication of an error in those events. However, 93 of those do have a status of 300 and above. What we're doing next is that we're going to send all the events that do not have an errors into the put Splunk, it's a TCP, and the 93 events that do have an errors, we're going to send them into Splunk HTTP event collector. Clicking on the properties of the put Splunk, we see that the put Splunk will send the results to Splunk on port 9997, and it's going to use the protocol TCP, and as we indicated earlier, Splunk is going to wait for those requests to be received on that particular port and that particular host. As far as the HTTP event collector, clicking on the configure, we see several items. One is the remote URL I'm going to use using HTTP and localhost. And as I indicated earlier, in my case, the HTTP event collector is running on port 9088. Then I'm going to complete the request using the services and the collector. And in my case, I chose to send the results to Splunk as raw. And I also indicated to Splunk that the results are coming and we're going to mark them as source type equals access combined. And at the bottom, I added the authorization and the UDDI, the X Splunk request channel. The authorization, I need to assign a token that was generated by Splunk. So copying the token, clicking OK, clicking Apply. We now 
can start the put Splunk and the HTTP event collector. At this point, we can see that Splunk using the TCP sent 144 events and 93 events were sent using the HTTP event collector. And we can also see that the queues are now empty. At this point, we can look at Splunk. If, for example, in this case, I have index equals NiFi data, the source, I'm just looking for the errors, so the NiFi HTTP event collector, and the top items. And we can see and visualize information and data that came through the access combined that are just for the errors. Or we can just look at the entire raw data that came to us through TCP or NiFi and analyze that data that was massaged and was manipulated by NiFi before pushing the data to Splunk. In addition, we can see the get Splunk function. For example, clicking on the get Splunk configure we can see that if you type search index equals any data from Splunk, you can then ingest that data. In this particular case, we are doing it over port 8089. It's uh, REST APIs that allows us to log in to Splunk using the admin and the password, and then push that data, in this particular case, I was pushing that data to the publish Kafka. And in my case, Kafka is running on port 9092, and we can choose which topic to send the data from Splunk into Kafka and a few other parameters. So those kind of items, flexibilities, manipulations, can be all done using NiFi. To see the full list of what can be done with NiFi, go to nifi.apache.org, click on the documentation, click on videos, you will see a way to create templates, how to manipulate the uh, UI, or click on the documentations and search for any item that you want, for example, TCP, and you can see how to get data from Splunk directly into the get tcp or any other option that is available in the ui can be described in details in this page stream sets which is very similar to nifi is also a ui tool that is an open source and can be used to manipulate data before you send the data into Splunk. In the case of Streamset, there is a nice blog that was written that can take you through the step-by-step -step on creating a flow and then sending that flow after manipulating the data into Splunk. Looking at Streamset's UI, it has all the same characteristics as we saw before with NiFi, where you can go in and pick any element from the right side and drop it into the canvas and then create a flow that can be used to send data and manipulate data before it gets ingested. For example, in this case, we have a credit card data in a CSV file. The file gets loaded as part of the tutorial here into Streamset. Once the data has been loaded, the next step in this tutorial is to split the credit card information from the cash transactions using this particular regular expression. Once 
the credit card information has been split, you can write a Jython code. And in this particular example, the code separates the Visa from the MasterCard, from the American Express, from the Dinos Club and Discover, and so that each credit card, by the time it gets to Splunk, we already know which credit card was used for the transaction. In addition to that, there is a mask credit card number, which is just this field masker option. Once you use that, you can hide all the credit card information from the end user. In this particular case, other than the last four digits, everything else are going to be hidden with stars. And so, as you can see, the pre-processing of StreamSet is getting the data, splitting it between credit card and cash, all the credit card information is get sorted by the vendor and then get masked. And then finally, the information is getting sent to Splunk using HTTP event collector, very similar to what we saw before. In this case, uh, in this example, we sending it to, the, to Splunk using this port, using the raw option, and we can add any source type or host into this. And as was the case before, we need the, the token to be added to the authorization and the UDDI to the XSplunk request. And the other parts are very similar to what we saw before with HTTP method is a post and a few other elements that you can manipulate before ingesting the data in Splunk. And once we sending the data into Splunk, we can see that all the credit cards have been uh, masked and the credit card type is also sorted. All of those things are done pre-Splunk ingestion. Thank you.